Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we will try to extract lithium salts from lithium polymer batteries and make some nice fushia fire. Ok, so we first need some batteries. I have here two different types but it doesn't really matter as long as there is lithium in them. You can find them in most rechargeable electronics such as an old laptop or a camera. We start by peeling the plastic casing to be left with only the metal shell. Here is a time lapse of me doing it. Then we somehow open them using something sharp or even a saw. Inside we will find a roll which contains the mixed lithium cobalt oxide that we need. You will also find a copper foil with graphite but this is useless here and shall be separated. So in a beaker I put it aside our oxides foil and throwed the rest. As I just said, the compound here is not just lithium but a mixed oxide of cobalt and lithium with this formula. To separate the metals we will first dissolve them in diluted hydrochloric acid to avoid any fire hazard because the oxide can actually make the organic compounds in the foil take fire. The amount of acid doesn't need to be precise, just add enough to dissolve a maximum amount of product. As you may have seen on the Wikipedia page, the cobalt in this oxide is in the rare plus 3 oxidation state. Therefore, it can oxidize the acid to chlorine gaze to a small extent, so be careful of the gases produced. Also, we noticed that the solution turned to a bright red coloration. This is due to the cobalt chloride complex with water. If I did not add the water to dissolve the acid, the coloration would be a deep dark blue, which you can see reappearing when water gets removed from the solution. Then we filter everything and wash the foils with some water. Ok, so basically my first method was to directly extract lithium chloride by re-crystallization because it was in theory possible, but there is just not enough lithium compared to the amount of cobalt in solution, so the salts don't actually separate when boiling down. I have found another way to separate them which actually work, but I will show that in a minute. Before that, here is a quick montage of this attempt. As the water gets removed, the solution become more and more blue. I test the presence of lithium in the cobalt salt by a flam test. Lithium ion makes a cool pink coloration while cobalt doesn't appear in the flam. Then I tried to extract lithium chloride with ethanol, but it didn't work either. So anyway, here is the real working method. We first boil down everything to get the solids dry salts and weight them. According to this paper, we should be able to selectively precipitate cobalt oxalate as a solid by using oxalic acid or ammonium oxalate. I tried to test the two in test tubes to see which one gives the best result. As you can see the solution is much more clear on the right test tube with oxalic acid, so we will use that one. I don't remember how I did the math, but basically for 12 grams of lithium and cobalt chloride, we will approximately need 14 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. If you do the calculations yourself, remember that your oxalic acid is most likely the dihydrate form and you need to adapt the molar mass. Anyway, we dissolve it in water and add it to our solution and a pink precipitate of cobalt oxalate forms. Here we might think that this reaction can't happen, as hydrochloric acid is stronger than oxalic acid. But because cobalt oxalate is insoluble, the equilibrium shifts accordingly to the equation. As we compare our beaker to the test tube, we can see that the top solution layer is still a bit pink, which indicate that there might be some cobalt chloride left. 
So to fix that, we can add a little bit more of oxalic acid because we will separate the excess when boiling down anyway. Then we filter the solution through a coffee filter and can observe that the cobalt oxalate turns grey on contact with air and water. When it gets dry, it's stable in the pink form though. So I just put it in a pan to dry outside, but if you don't care, you can dispose of it. If you want cobalt metal, you can react it with aluminium foil in a displacement reaction or get it by decomposition in high temperatures with the absence of oxygen to get pyrophoric particles of cobalt. Then we place the solution on a hot plate and boil it down until oxalic acid crystals start to appear. We cool down the solution to room temperature so that a maximum amount of crystals precipitate and then filter to get rid of them. They can also probably be recycled if you want. After most of the oxalic acid was removed, the solution became a dark green turquoise colour. This is due to metal impurities such as nickel, manganese and others. If you still have a big amount of solution left when this happens, you can probably recrystallize lithium chloride, but here I just wanted to show the cool flame color, so I boiled down the solution until a solid was left. The metal impurities won't affect the flame color, that's why I didn't bother removing them. Also, I had a small volume of solution due to losses when trying the first extraction method. Anyway, after all of this, we can observe this nice flam when the solid is heated and mixed with ethanol. Methanol would in theory be better, but I didn't have any. If you enjoyed the video or learnt something, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.